the Shane Dawson situation, I don't know if you guys are, it's kind of old news and kind of new news at the same time. So Shane Dawson, for those who don't know, is a uh, YouTube juggernaut. He's been on the platform since I was a little boy. Um, and he uh, used to do like this weird shock jock form of comedy where he would just like say offensive things and that was the punchline question mark like Mm kind of like anthony jeselnik but not funny and it's gotten him into a lot of trouble now because the cancel culture um and don't even get me started i know why do we have to live in a time where people are accountable for their actions shane dawson kind of went through this giant transformation where he made a bunch of clickbait like often sexualized stuff about like miley cyrus and other celebrities back in like 2007 2008 or whatever and then had a and let, let's not forget, Miley Cyrus is how old now? I don't, yeah, I don't even want to, I don't even remember. I just yeah. like looked at some old titles of Shane Dawson videos. He's done blackface more times than you could count. He's done. Mm. Um, and it's mostly not been funny. All kinds of like, like pedophilia jokes. Like in, in, you know, I will say that they are attempts at jokes. I'm not saying that he's a pedophile. I'm not saying that. You know, he is racist even. I'm just saying that he has a track record of objectionable content that he made under the guise of comedy that ultimately doesn't land, even in context. And he's apologized uh, very, like, poorly. Um, So historic... And only when provocated. Yeah, so... Never like a... Like like a straightforward, hey, yeah, you saw the blackface thing. Let me jump on that and also address these other things over here. It was always fine. My my dad told me I have to apologize. It boiled to a head recently because of the whole uh, Tati Westbrook, James Charles, Jeffrey Star drama. Are you familiar with this? The, the yeah, the, I'm I'm familiar with most of the anime saga. Yeah, yeah. So the, the I know the villains, but I know one of them joins the team or something. Yeah, it's so the video I actually want to talk about. Ugh is uh, and while i'm giving this backstory is a video by d'angelo wallace who um is a a great creator he put together this video that is like very well researched and kind of puts a bunch of things in in context um and i think everyone should watch it because it will change your perspective on shane dawson most likely um but anyway the drama was shane dawson came out and was talking about was talking about um, the beauty community, kind of shat on it, kind of said that, uh, famously said that James Charles needed a slice of humble pie the size of the Empire State Building. And it's like, James Charles to this day is still very young, right? Like, yeah, James Charles is 21. So we've got like these 30-year-old men um, like shitting on this 19-year-old boy. And he... With, with for the most part, unfounded. Yeah unfounded um and then people who were like upset by this understandably went out and started like finding receipts on shane dawson from this time and shane dawson has done some pretty objectionable shit when he was way older than james charles the main point that d'angelo is making is that like shane has apologized in the past but he is to know he's not addressed the true stuff that he's been accused of it's like sure i did blackface sure i said the n-word and it's like he did that way too much it's like gross as hell there's like and it's what mid-20s yeah i I mean like it's uh he compares like shane dawson's um blackface videos to minstrelsy i'll show you edgy humor right now edgy humor is this scene in it's always sunny in philadelphia in which what's her face puts on black or brown face or whatever you want to call it and then starts trying to explain POC issues to a group of actual POC. What are you doing? Just go with it. Let me ask you something. Why we got to be the trash men and the maids and the gardeners? Hmm? Why we got to live next to the trash dumps and the ghettos? We deserve better! Do I personally think it's funny? In concept, yes. In execution, no. It's very cringy. But... This, on the other hand, is something Shane Dawson made in a similar time period, is literally just blackface. And that ghetto tacky ass weave she got from the corner store. And that face, ugh. 
She got a face of a beast. Look how similarly Shane puts himself up compared to these images of actual minstrel shows. And it's like Fuck me. Yeah, it's 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 like bad. And what's the is the the is the thesis of like the always sunny part that well that that is not a joke about how it's funny to dress up as a black person. Yeah, it's that's like a, the, that's a joke about how pathetic it would be to be to black. Dress up yeah, as a black it's person. like black people are always the butt of the joke, and that's kind of like yeah. unlike you know the blackface in Community, where mm. like Ken Jong is in blackface as an elf. It's like he's not a black person; he's an elf. But then the black sure. characters on screen comment on it. Um, but yeah, it's like it's not only the racist stuff; it's also like. Uh, it, weird animal stuff he's done where he just like makes all these like like making out with dogs like weird animal h- stuff humping, he's done is such a bad way to start any humping dogs anecdote. making out with them and then oh, talking no, about this. talking about like how he wants to have sex with them didn't and then stuff I don't even want to say on stream with his cat well that's a thing that he came out and said he didn't do yeah and then mm-hmm. um it continues to get bad uh, when there's also like podcast clips that he's said in the past were taken out of context. So D'Angelo is just like, okay, I'm going to play a full like six minute clip or, or a few minute clip where you can hear the entire context of this where, and it's like his joke, his, his <sighs> quote unquote, like the joke is coming from like, isn't it crazy that I'm saying these shocking things? I'm calling a baby attractive. I'm, I'm doing this thing to Willow Smith. You know what I mean? Like, Sure. Like it's like that's his joke, and, and it's just like mm-hmm. it doesn't work, and it's I I just it's probably because he's not a comedian. Yeah, I mean it's it's exactly what every fourteen year old thinks is funny. It, not just because it's like quite immature or any of that shit. It's just like technically legally a joke, I guess. Yeah, you've taken a thing and done the thing that you shouldn't do. Ha ha ha! You got them. It's also a shortcut to be being shocking is a shortcut to being funny, kind of. Yeah, because it makes people laugh nervously, and I guess it's legally the same as making a funny joke. Yeah, it's just that like it lacks self awareness and it lacks like a wink and a nod or a commentary, and instead like leans into like the harmful, the most harmful aspects of the the thing that is supposed to be humorous. The actual worst thing he did to me, uh, not to me, the worst thing he did in my okay. perspective we'll get into that. is uh, he kind of normalizes a lot of like abusive behavior. You know, there's this thing about like him making all these really weird comments to his niece about puberty and about sex and stuff. And you could take that or leave it. Like he claims that like, that's just how our family is, whatever. But when you have a platform, you have to be mindful of like what sort of image you're giving to your audience. And also it's a pattern for him to like sexualize children to the point where at VidCon, he kissed a fan on the lips who was 12 years old, which is in unacceptable. And then later that person came out and said like, essentially I was groomed by the content of Onision and like Shane Dawson because they normalized like this behavior to me. And it's like, it's not about whether or not Shane intended to do this because I don't think that he intended to do it. And I believe, you know, his friends and other people who claim that he's a good guy and means well, the fact of the matter is that doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is like, if there is harm on the other end of your content on a large scale where you should be accountable to your large audience, an apology that addresses minor things here and minor things there doesn't get at the, the it's only gonna feel hollow. Like kissing a 12 year old fan on the lips when you're 21 years old? How did you think that was okay? Well, I, I, would, I, would, I would guess that making the kind of shit he's been making and kind of getting away with, I suppose, never being in trouble to the degree where it's actually disenfranchised or, like, destroyed his career yeah. would start to make you feel yeah, invincible. Or there's it's just not like... the first time we've heard people do absurd shit, but especially <laughs> yeah. in his case. The thing, the thing you mentioned about if you have a platform of that scale, you have a responsibility. Yeah. To, and, hey, you could ignore that responsibility, but then you're just as uh, culpable for getting shit on as a result. Yeah, you're always you culpable also, at the end of the day. Yeah, You have double the responsibility if it's very obviously a demographic of children yeah like exactly if you if you have like a bar and you like when people get into a fight you don't stop them and like you serve poison drinks and you're just like a shitty dirty mean bar yeah. that's really bad if underage kids come into that shitty dive bar 
you're in a whole new genre of shitty. There's a comment here in the chat that I'm going to read. I don't like using it as, as an excuse, but it really was a different time. And a lot of people didn't really critically look at whatever fangirls were doing. People got away with a lot because people dismissed it as, oh, young fangirls are just so wild. It, it doesn't, that doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for I me. I don't know what, I don't know what the statement is there. Yeah. So I, I don't like it. Are you, are you using it as an excuse? He's not using it as an excuse, but, but like the thing is, I was around. I was there during this time. This was not okay. I was watching YouTube. Do you think the vlog brothers were up to the shit? No. And it's like, yes, there were some YouTube, you know, it's like Michael Buckley, what the buck? He pushed the envelope. He got nowhere near this level of like nonsense. You know what I mean? Like Harvey Weinstein's accusations don't only go back to the point where it was bad. Yeah, it's like it's like Hollywood it's was a everything. different time. It's like, no, that doesn't there's no excuse. That's the thing. It like doesn't matter what the context was. Because at the end of the day, if someone's, it's like, look, I'm sorry, my mental health and my background and my whatever, it was a different time. I did shoot a person. I did kill someone. But like, you have to understand that like, we were all killing people back then. It's like, it no, was the wild west. some people were killing people, but it was never okay. And I, I strongly disagree with anyone who says that like, this was okay at the time, or this was understandable at the time. Not least of which, because it, uh, it castrates process, progress. Yeah. Like. Oh, it was a different time. Okay, so when do we... At what point did, the, like, the watershed end on doing this despicable shit? Yeah. Was it, like, 2009? So after that, we can start being stressed out by things. But, like, what what changes the cultural standards aside from it always being a problem? Yeah. If we then came to him and was like, hey, this is really fucked up, he'd be like, actually, we're currently in a different time. Yeah, no I haven't been cancelled for this yet, so I don't think we're in the, in the time where I should and be. And, like, yet. the fact that, like, the only thing that like like from a narrative perspective the only thing that's true about it being a different time is that no one th there was a lack of awareness because youtube was a smaller community and there was a lack of protecting there was a lack of a dialogue sort of as a world community and as a culture in protecting people on the internet from abuse and different forms of abuse because it's like it's a new type of, uh, of abuse in many ways. Um, it, but it, in many other ways, it's not. And like also Francesca Ram, like D'Angelo points this out, like Francesca Ramsey and other creators were calling out Shane's content in like 2007 or 2008. Like it wasn't just like flying under the radar to that extent, but like yeah. the people with the platforms, the people who were enabling were not saying no. Like, and that's, to me the problem like it's it was consistently enabled and that is a product of the culture but it doesn't excuse it doesn't excuse anything the person that brought that up in the chat is saying that they're using it more as an example though i don't think that devalues what we're saying because it is for sure and i have seen that statement literally fucking everywhere used as a very real excuse of the behavior uh they also gave the insight or the, the interesting note that like there was no proper representation for those fangirls and that's correct. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be completely fucking honest with you, more often than not, they'd get the Lewinsky treatment. Yeah. They'd get the Monica yeah, Lewinsky treatment. Yeah, it's a great example. Like, oh my God, you, I can't believe you did that or you let that happen. Yeah, and like Monica Lewinsky was the obvious yeah, part. sexually abused by a man, a very powerful man. And we should say, I mean, I know maybe our demographic isn't old enough to know about that, but that's uh, oh, I mean, uh, Bill, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, yeah, former yeah. US President Bill Clinton sexually abused an intern monica Lewinsky, um and which when when that was found out she was ostracized she was the bad her, guy her career and life was destroyed yeah and and like now she talks about bullying online she talks she uses her platform for so much good and i think she deserves like a shout out what up monica Lewinsky? like genuinely come on the pod actually. genuinely come on the pod she um she also has a clapback game like no other like like on twitter she will <laughs> yeah she's out of control yeah, yeah 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 i agree that it's a different time now and i agree that like we are having a dialogue about these things it does not excuse past behavior a lot about the time that we're in now is re like is looking back on like what we allowed in the past and like even if it's retroactive finding sort of justice and and, and, and sort of defending the people and the communities that were wrong do you know what i mean so mm -hmm. 
the uh the other thing on this on the shane video that i'll say the last thing and it's the worst from a content perspective there's a series that the fine brothers and shane dawson made called hey millie and it features shane dawson and a puppet who is supposed to be an eight-year-old girl named millie already a problem because the joke with hey millie is that this fictional eight-year-old is saying outlandish inappropriate shit and the adults in the room are going, ha ha ha, that's crazy. This is a joke. This has been a joke forever. Like literally Sadie's sister was on Mad TV as a child uh, in a bit where she said something offensive. Like she called somebody a bitch or something as a baby, as a kid. And it's like, ha ha ha, sure. the, the kids are doing funny stuff. But this is so fucked up when you just like look at it. And you also know the audience, Mad TV's audience is adults, right? Like, and maybe it's like shitlord teenagers like us, but like, the um, Shane Dawson's audience is children. Clearly, the people who are going to his meet and greets are like 12 year old girls. So like, that's what we're working with here. You know what we could do, Millie? What? Motorboat! What's motorboat? I don't know what porn is. Oh. So what is pornography? Porn is a type of filmmaking. Oh, it's a filmmaking, yay, like no. this. We're making porn together! No, we're not Everyone making come porn. come on down and watch Ralphie the Grown Man make porn with an eight-year-old! No. Almost not. So, Millie, you a fan of the D? Are you talking about your big dick? What does dick mean? What? No! I was talking about D like DZ. I don't care if they don't care that it's fucked up. And I don't care if they don't understand why it isn't funny. What I'm confused and like intellectually insulted by is the idea that they wouldn't see it's tactless. Like, yeah, like you can, you, yeah, think dumb shit, uh, maybe even write dumb shit, but at the very least, from the most cynical way possible, as their like <laughs> consultant, I would say like, y um, yikes, just like, even if I thought it was funny, I would just be like, don't put it in, yeah, don't put it in the movie, obviously. Like, oh yeah, funny bit with that puppet. Don't release it, obviously. Yeah, it's like, you crazy? it gets worse and I just can't show it. I can't have you, I can't have you watch it. I can't listen to it again myself. But it's like, at some point the puppet is not wearing clothes. So it's like, okay, well it's an eight year old. So what are we doing here? If that's the thing. And then there's also like sexual advances that the puppet is making towards Shane saying some like outlandish shit. And it's like, stop, just stop. Think about what you're doing, about what you're saying, and about who you're saying it to. And no one is doing that. It's just like everyone's like, ha, 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 YouTube content. Um, I wanted to draw a comparison real quick because we're talking about this stuff and talk about the time. Oh, good. Good find. So like, so like Bo Burnham, who we are both fans of, I think Bo Burnham is one of the like m most inspirational artists to me in my creative life and also just like an incredible an incredible creator um, I, I, I say an artist that's put out put out what i would be comfortable dying after yeah, yeah 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 and so like when he was 16 he started his youtube channel and he was famous for making inappropriate jokes in song but like i don't know what separates like what what the difference is you know what i mean like one he's 16 so it is different it is different for a 16 year old oh, yeah. but um it's and it's also it's just that it's framed in a clear parody i am not the world's biggest fan of the icy cold take that you could do anything in comedy yeah, bro yeah, if yeah. you stop comedy happening well i gotta make the joker i guess yeah. you know like that kind yeah, of shit yeah, yeah. Shut up. No, just think like critically. It's, we're not destroying comedy. Comedy requires an audience. And if the audience isn't engaged, it's not the audience's fault. Fucking grow up. The great thing about the way that Bo Burnham writes is that he's writing for a parody version of himself. Mm -hmm. The joke is the absurdity of the statement he's making and how dumb Bo, fictional Bo, or how silly fictional Bo is for making that joke. It feels like it this exists track... inside of a world that it has defined for itself. Yes. Like where like similarly to like Anthony Jesselnik who makes even like more outlandish humor and that's his entire bit. I went online 15 child molesters. 15 child molesters within 5 miles of my apartment. So why do we always have to meet at my place? <laughs> And he pushes, I think he pushes the line of comedy, like, the furthest 
uh, in terms of like what you can like what if you look at the transcript, what he's literally saying, it still feels different than like the Shane stuff. I'm going to read these Bo Burnham lyrics because I'll read the beginning of the song. Uh, what's a pirate minus the ship? Just a creative homeless guy and an ant eater plus a large hungry mutant ant. An ironic way to die and what's domain domain range? A kid with too much in his pants and two balls a minus one. Six titles at the Tour de France. The Tour de France. Cancer. Cancer. That's that's like a, a you know, that's a Bo Burnham, you know, thing. It's like he's making fun of a lot of things. He's doing it in a, but there's also the upbeat construct of the song and the fact. And one of the reasons his shows work so well is that he's, quite literally, he's taking you as the audience's hand and he's saying do you want to come into my little house my weird little and house it's full of, and you're like you don't you feel a bit bad for coming into my weird little house and it's a pun and it's like it's drawing the audience to like laugh at things that they shouldn't laugh at and that's different sure. than like shane because there's no jokes with shane stuff it's like saying the shocking thing is a joke to me Bo is like working for the joke and this is Bo as like a 16 to 18 year old you know what i mean yeah. so it's like younger than shane doing much more yeah yeah, yeah. Shit. it's like here's here now now that i set up that here's like maybe the worst well here's two of the worst ones and if kim is half as old as bobby who, who is two years older than 12 year old tori for how many more 30 day months will their threesomes be considered statutory rape and it's like, ooh, a rape joke, you know? Mm. And it's like, but in the construction of like a math problem and being drawn to that punchline, it serves a construct as a joke. And so it's like, whether or not it's appropriate or not is kind of not even the point I'm making. It is constructed as a joke. You have no idea where and he's it, going. And then there's- That joke can only be served that way. Yeah. Again, I don't, it doesn't crack me up. This is not like- Yeah. This younger material is remarkable for being sixteen, but it's not the stuff that I really. Yeah, really when to, I was when I was sixteen and what like what listening to this, I sang along to this song. I clearly know all the lyrics to it or whatever, and it's like so I get and it. And the refrains, I I do. Yeah, the lyrics are actually wrong here on Genius, and I'm correcting them. Um, You're and then the worst the worst line is you know in squaring numbers. And squaring numbers are just like women. If they're under thirteen, just do them in your head. It's a joke where where it's like, once again, I can't sort of say the joke is okay because that's like for the viewer to understand or for the viewer to make their own conclusions. But the punchline of the joke isn't the expense of a young person. It's actually sure. saying like, don't do, essentially like, what, he, what this could be read as saying is, hey, Shane Dawson, if you are uh, thinking about making uh, a video where you're jerking off to a uh, uh, to an image of underage 13 year old Willow Smith um, maybe just do that in your head and don't do it so you know it's like there's mm -hmm. even yeah. like even hey, Benny and Rafi maybe take that line out it's like even the 16 year old Bo Burnham here is like has enough self-awareness to know that like to not go as far as Shane does you know, someone said, someone said that it's always sunny joke, you know, like, I think that the always sunny joke is another example of something that like, I don't think, um, you know, you can have your opinion about it, but it is thoughtful in how it's presented. And if you look at the transcript of what the people are saying, sure, it looks bad, but watching it in context, it is clearly a joke and it is clearly making a commentary. And the butt of the joke is not... The mar but a joke is D. The marginalized party. She is yeah. the yeah. And, she is the joke. And and that's what upset me about the fact that community, the episode Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which is one of the best episodes of Community, was taken off of Netflix due to the blackface thing. And it's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> the it's a commentary on blackface. You have Donald Glover and Yvette Nicole Brown commenting on it during it and he's not even a black person he's an elf right like it's the butt of the joke is Ken Jong not knowing where the line is not knowing that it's inappropriate to do blackface under any context even when he's not being a black person you know what I mean and like to take away that like kind of like we it kind of loses community came out in 2009 
Community came out in 2009, the same year that Shane Dawson was doing blackface and was making smart jokes about not doing blackface. In both of these examples, the people doing it are the ones that are comedically out of touch. Yeah. Like, oh, like, sorry, like, by which I mean hilariously out of touch. They don't understand what it is that they've been doing wrong. And that's not because you can't make jokes about anything these days, bro. Gotta go make the Joker. Bad movie, don't believe. Yeah. Otherwise, if you do, you probably need to, like, think more about the media you consume. Yeah. It's, that's not the response to it. Your response needs to be, hey, oh, I see they're critiquing the behavior of those people and removing critiques of that behavior is kind of just like, oh, okay, so the only blackface material that could exist anywhere is people doing it sincerely? Yeah. Like like Shane having a platform being able to do yeah. that even built in the abstract on, for Built so on blackface, yeah. The, the other thing is that like, people like to pretend that people weren't protesting or critiquing stuff at the time. Bo Burnham was uh, like boycotted and stuff and he was like- Oh yeah. You know, like people like protested him performing at their shows, even though he was like an 18 year old kid making these like off color jokes. So, and it's like, don't even get me started on Eminem who said a bunch of outlandish shit, even under the guise of a character where like he, you know, um, he's been protested and demonstrated against picket signs for his wicked rhymes. Look at the times. What was that? 2003? It was a different times. There's two types of this statement, right? And I know which one you're doing, and I want to make it really clear to everyone. There's a statement of, it was a different time, so here were the things that were happening yeah. differently, versus this was a different time, so excuse this thing over the other. This is, this is close to saying, like, it was a different time, and that's why all the guys on Mad Men are horrible, sexist, right. and creeps. I'm Not, it was a different time, so leave Don Draper alone for being a weird, sexist creep. There is artistry to Eminem's work. There is artistry to... Bo Burnham's work, and I do not feel like Shane's stuff has that artistry, and thus it like doesn't deserve the like you could write think pieces about Bo Burnham or Eminem, right? And like sort of try to tease apart what they've contributed to the culture and what they've taken away by propagating any harmful ideas. Less so for Bo Burnham because he like after he was a teenager, he kind of got away from that stuff. Sure. Like if Shane Dawson's stuff had reached out more widely, no doubt he would have been like criticized. Now it's just coming to light because the eyeballs weren't, he's built an entire platform on this. And I think it's like appropriate to, yeah, someone's saying it could possibly be because YouTube was so insular back then. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. I'm saying that like, he, it was so insular back then, but he built a sort of, uh, he built a career on it. So I think it's fair game to, criticize and to sort of hold accountable someone in a powerful position you yeah know? you don't you, you don't get to have the power and also the immunity of ignorance yeah that's the that's like ignorance and benefit of the doubt are the things you have to check at the door when you go into the influencer club yeah like once you once you are in a position of power and you have clout in any career but let's like you know keep it in circle with yeah with specifically creators yeah. and content producers there's a tax on being that and the taxes you have to be more responsible than most people do with those kind of statements you, it's a little bit like how if you have 30 grand in the bank you don't get to gripe about being broke it can be cathartic to gripe about being broke but once you have that 30 grand in the bank Sorry, you just, you, that's the thing you don't get anymore. Yeah. That's the trade-off. Yeah. This is just like that. You you can feign ignorance all you want. You can pull back and you can say that, well, I, J.K. Rowling, am just, uh, I'm allowed just like anybody else to hold an opinion and then also decry the, the issues with cancel culture. Cancel culture isn't like some fucking amorphous, magical yeah. like, presence floating all around us. Oh my God, it's, look out everyone. It's the disease of cancel culture. Yeah. We have to find, we have to run away from it. Yeah. It's just, all cancel culture is, is people's reaction to shit you did. Yeah. When you say you want rid of cancel culture, what you're saying is, I don't want people to react this way to the thing that's happening. That's not a thing you can do. That's not yeah. a power that you or anybody else has. I think there's a good faith argument to be made there. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is like it's just on its face objectionable behavior. Yeah. That, 
And, and we've, uh, yeah. people have actually thrown out, uh, I know, like a ton of other comparisons. Tyler, the creator, Joji. Yeah. Uh, Filthy Frank. It, Filthy Frank Filthy, as Joji. Filthy Frank's yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Which also, like, nobody knows anymore. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> like, you can challenge things like that if you want. And this, this, this itch is an instinct that I have that I don't know how comfortable I am. I'm not even sure if I agree with it, but I yeah. want to throw it to you to see whether or not you're on roughly sure. the same page. There is a part of me that does value how funny it is. And it's not because, well, if it's funny, I can ignore the problematic part of it. What it is, is if a joke, a track, or whatever is really well constructed, there is a small part of Jordan that's able to say to himself, well, in order to make a really good joke, you do have to think critically. And I'm willing to bet this person gets it. Like, Jezelnik is a great example. Like, yeah. I don't, when I hear Cheselnik make a joke about X or Y, I don't go, well, that's got to be close to his real personal beliefs. It's right. so deliberately absurd and well put together. I'm like, nobody that, that thinks like that and puts things together with that level of intricacy just did it randomly. There's just no way. Or even something like South Park, you know? Like, it's just like yeah. a lot of thought goes into, even though the stuff being said is like objectionable in a lot of different ways, like, I think there is value, and I also don't know where I stand on this, but I do think that there's value in the work that was put in. Like, for example, like when I, uh, like if I make a video shitting on Five Minute Crafts or or shitting on J Station, like I don't like shit on just anybody. Uh, and I shit on J Station because there's a subtext to what I'm making fun of. And like, you may look at a very simple joke of me just like saying J Station like sounds stupid or does something stupid or whatever. Uh, but what I'm actually doing is punching down at like J Station's premise of his video that homophobia is funny. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, so in calling out like that, it's like, it's clear that I've thought about like what I, or I guess for me, it's like, I always think about how, what my commentary means, what it means for me to comment on this thing. What's the end goal and what's the, the damage it could do. And is that a concern? Yeah. Uh, there is a like sh- Cody Co is not a cyber bully. Yeah. I think we can say exactly. that with some authority, but if you want to pick and choose literally what it is that he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. He did identify somebody online and said funny things about them that could be considered mean, but, on closer inspection, no, 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 no. You clo- you more closely inspect any of the Shane Dawson shit. Doesn't re- doesn't fix it. Doesn't resolve it. Doesn't like yeah. absolve him of all the shit. All it does is like maybe make it worse in a lot of cases. It's yeah. like, oh, Shane did that that pretty bad stuff. But what about his other content? Oh, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, and I think that you know to blame YouTube a little bit too. I think that YouTube is somewhat complicit because of like their their view on the types of content that they are willing to take a stand against versus not. Um, you know, Shane mm. had his past for the entirety of his past, and yet YouTube kind of co-signed him for a lot of the way. He's recently been suspended from his ads. He, it's a little bit of a golden parachute for Shane Dawson. YouTube has had this like very laissez-faire, very hands-off perspective on the content on its platform, unless it gets into like, like actively endangering someone in terms of violence or what have you. But when it comes to these more insidious ways that people harm, like any one of fucking J Station's videos, uh, somehow like it takes for J Station to get arrested for his YouTube channel to go away. And it's like, that's not, his channel should have gone away a long time ago because all one person has to do is look at what he's doing and say buying slaves off the dark web isn't someone that deserves to have a platform. If you don't kick a neo-Nazi off the platform, what you implicitly say is that it's okay to be a neo-Nazi. Yeah. You can you can throw smoke, you can throw bombs just as much as you want to block the fact that you're doing that. You can yeah. say, well, nope, your honor, I, I plead the fifth. I wasn't involved at all. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, you didn't you didn't defuse the bomb, did you? And I think yeah. you didn't do the thing, but you didn't stop the thing when you had absolute power to do so. It's just embarrassing. Yeah. And hiding behind the corporate scale, too, is a big part of that. Like, oh, well, we're YouTube. We're just a big robot. I feel like morally responsible, knowing what I know now about Shane's content, to tell other people who may not know what has transpired in the past because I'm not thinking about if I had seen D'Angelo's video when, um, and I think that like we need to sort of be mindful of like who we're propping up with this sort of 
behavior. Um, and Shane, like, I, it's like, I want him to be better. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think his platform's going away. I think that, like, by no means is Shane Dawson going to lose his entire audience and his entire income. He is hopefully going to learn from this experience and move forward in a more, like, in a cleaner way. Like he's not gonna lose his livelihood. So I don't think that we should worry about holding him accountable for his past actions because- Nor do it's not also fuck off with that shit. I'm so sick of, well, don't destroy a man's job. Yeah. It's like, fucking, sorry, excuse you? Yeah. What? That's yeah. not, what, it, that's, it's just like when COVID hit and all of a sudden everybody was like, well, but the, you know, if you can't pay rent, you're, you're screwing over your landlord. I just think it's important for, you know, 10 years from now when Shane is still making content for people to know his past before they become a fan of him so that they can move forward with a clear conscience. And also hopefully he's sort of gotten his shit together. Uh, and that's all we want because this platform's not going to go away. It's like Jake Paul. I don't, your platform's not going to go away. I just want you to be better and to like, acknowledge your, your past. Your platform is there. Like, I would love nothing more than for him to make a effective and sincere apology, not just because it would stop hurting the people that he's hurt and stop upsetting the people that he's upset, but think about that Stan base now. Now you've just taken an army of people refusing to listen to logic and refusing to grow. Yeah. Refusing to listen to Bobby Tarantino. Yeah, yeah, Bobby Tarantino. Yeah. And now you've, like, weaponized them in a good way. Yeah. If they're going to irrationally follow anything you say they yeah. should believe, then say that they should believe that you shouldn't mock children yeah and shouldn't do some pretty fucking heinous shit yeah. in public with the guise of being famous like the it, it would be so good for shane to come out and talk about what he's done and talk about why it's bad so that he can demonstrate that for his followers because him just apologizing in people being like i accept your apology all of which are like teeny boppers you know who like don't really know the extent of what he's done it's like going to make him feel good and like he's off scot-free or whatever, but doesn't actually serve to address the problem.